I'd like to call public 13th meeting to order for tonight, um, November 13th, 2024. Um, the first item is item 1A, um, the report from our police chief for September 2024. Chief, it's all yours. Yes, good evening, everyone. Attached is the September 2024 report uh, for the police department. As you can see in your review, um, our calls for service continue to go up. Um, we have experienced a little spike in our thefts. Uh, retail theft is also uh, continuing to be an issue for us that we're working on. Um, the theft part, we've made some arrests in some of those retail or some of those uh, theft from auto cases. We continue to work on them. Unfortunately, there's more than one group out there. Um, so we've been working with our partners uh, surrounding the police departments, Abington, Upper Moreland, specifically on a uh, major case. I'm hoping we can we can have some good news on that shortly involving the theft from autos. Um, residents are encouraged to immediately report suspicious activity to the police. Um, if you have a ring camera, um, we always canvass the area after an incident looking for them. That could be a big help to, uh, to our investigation as well. And you can sign up for the township's uh, camera program as well. It's on our website, the link for that. So um, these are all things that we, we, we use during the investigation that can be very helpful to us in identifying suspects and vehicles involved in these type of incidents, instances. So does anyone have any other questions for me regarding the September 2024 report? Commissioner Zegman, go ahead, sir. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Chief, um, in looking at the, um, the statistics, the one that really jumps out, is the bus patrol citation. Yes. There were mm -hmm. 854 over, a, say, a 24 school day period. So you're talking about 36 of those incidents a day. And let's just compare mm -hmm. that to the number of traffic citations and speed citations. Those total about 349. So mm -hmm. less than half of our traffic citations and speed citations are equivalent to what the bus um, patrol citations are. I think it's a very disturbing thing. We spend a lot of time talking about traffic calming and that kind of thing. There's a major problem here in the disrespect and the misbehaviors of drivers that do not respect and are being captured in an electronic fashion. And I, I think, you know, we've talked about that it's a, a $300 fine or whatever, but I think there have to be more serious sanctions than just finding and, and my question continues to be are we looking at repeat offenders are there ways that we can start to to spike up these are this unlike a traffic calming request is in direct it, it creates a direct risk for our school age children and their families as they get there and you know what it's not getting better despite the fact that we have the monitoring um and the capturing of those people uh doing this 36 incidents per day. Um, it's just waiting for a couple of fatalities to happen. It's very concerning. And I don't know if there are both Cheltenham and Montgomery County and state potential strategies that we can use or deploy in order to get this a little bit more under control. I agree, Commissioner. We've talked about this several times at Public Safety uh, over the past few months. Yep. These numbers are alarming. You know, my hope was that they would see start seeing decline. We've heavily advertised this. You've all seen us on social media, getting the word out. Um, our residents seem to be getting the word. We may not be reaching the Philadelphia audience with a lot of this because a lot of our violations are on the border. As I, I shared that information with the board of commissioners as well, our problem locations, um, but it continues to go up. Some of this number may be catch up as well. I'd have to check exactly um, if that's a true reflection for that month or if it's a catch up from the summer as well. Um, but it's still, regardless, regardless of that, that number is way too high, and it continues to be a high number uh, for us. I'm looking for different ways to get the word out uh, to the community. I, I'm, I'm, I'm at that. Really, I'm a little perplexed at the moment with this. I keep hitting it in social media. We're not hitting the right target audience, apparently. As far as the repeat offenders go, I'm going to have to look and see exactly uh, the number for repeat offenders, and I will get that information for the board uh, so that so they're aware of that. Um, the catch for or the repair for this is going to our state legislature and saying, you know, let's make these fines, uh, you know, prohibitive to these folks. Let's let's go after their license. Let's you know anybody who gets a second one, they they get a license suspension. Um, some kind of teeth to this more than a financial fine because the financial fine doesn't if, seem to be doing what we hope to what we to accomplish. So that would be the the probably the first step we should do is contact our, you know, our, our state representatives and our, you know our senator and say, here's what we need. We need help with this. This this bus patrol program needs some more teeth. 
draft legislation that goes after these people and makes them pay a heavy price for this. They continue to violate it. You that's, know, Chief, that's where I'm at. one of the things that people react to is they react to the sound of a siren. So I think one of the things that we should explore is do we have the ability when that arm goes out and when somebody clearly violates that we could that we could activate a siren on the bus? I don't know if the drivers are so, capable of that, but I would think that what that would do is that would immediately create both an awareness and a change in behavior. I appreciate that out-of-the-box thought, Commissioner. Everybody who's taking a driving test knows what red lights on a bus, school bus means, and that stop arm comes out. That means stop, don't pass the bus. We all know that. Anybody who's taken the driver test or read the driver book knows that. This is common knowledge. I would expect this to be common knowledge. It's, it's, I, this is coming from a place of frustration, as you can tell, with this. Uh, you know, um, uh, There is no re easy fix to this. That's so, why so I'm hoping we can get some, some rules on the books here that really hold these people accountable uh, you know, for repeat violations. But I will get the number to the board regarding the uh, the number of repeat offenders we have. I think we looked at that before, but I will get a solid number so you can have that. And I'll get that to you this week. Thank you. We're going to go Commissioner Cherico, NARS, and then Army. I have uh, two questions, Chief. Thanks so much for joining tonight. Um, first, about maybe a suggestion, not, not necessarily a question, uh, regarding the uh, bus um, it, um, issues. If we do have repeat f offenders, um, let's... Um, Let's roll their video, right? Let's put their video on social. Let's do the top five worst offenders of the week or something along those lines. Let's put it on social media. Let's show their cars, you know, blowing past, past school bus, buses. We've got the video, right? We've got the f pictures. Why aren't we embarrassing them? Why aren't we putting them up there and saying, these are the people who are putting your children at risk? Those, that's the sort of stuff that gets people to pay attention, gets people to share, gets people to talk about it. Granted, many of them may not be following Cheltenham police, but it could get shared. You know, you put it on Instagram, put it on Facebook. Maybe people will start to notice and see that this is happening and uh, spur some conversations. So, you know, maybe we can talk further about how we do that, whether it's repeat offenders. If we don't have enough repeat, maybe we just do the, you know, top five worst of the week. And we just kind of show show people what's happening out there. And uh, we've got the images. So let's use them. And we could also piggyback off of that. I appreciate the suggestion as well. I'm looking at things we could throw at this. You know, we do have contacts in the media. We could probably have uh, that brought out and a story done on that, maybe to help get the word out as well. Um, we could certainly go that avenue as well, but I appreciate the suggestion. Um, the second thing is well, the retail theft. Um, and, and, and I guess I want to find out, you know, what are we doing? about this uh, that might too be outside the box. I mean, if you walk into a Target, you're, you're walking into a, into a big old um, ha uh, building filled with padlocks, right? You have to ask them to unlock um, the doors, uh, the, the cages or the whatever for, for anything that you wanna buy there practically. Uh, it's, just a, it's just an unpleasant experience. And I just wonder how long before Target packs up and moves out? How much, how long before, you know, fresh market, whatever. I mean, it, it's just not a pleasant way to go about shopping in our area. And, I, you know, I just I just feel like, you know, and I, I brought this up when we talked about the budgeting before. Um, I, I really think there needs to be a joint um, a task force or, or, you know, a joint a group of, of retailers. And, and I don't know that they would be willing to join together to kind of combat some sort of, uh, you know, something together as a group with maybe funding police protection in that area. Um, but, but I just, it, it, it's so darn frustrating to go shopping over in, in that area and just have to, you know, ask someone to unlock to get, you know, a, 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 some contact solution or a, a, a container of laundry detergent. It just makes the, the experience unpleasant. It's not the community that I want to live in um, where we're, we're, and I feel like we need to come up with, you know, some other ways um, and, and, and grabbing those people together, uh, the, the retail owners together to try to maybe come up with something, um, you know, I don't know. I, I'm just frustrated and I know you are as well. And I just go, want to maybe see if we can think outside the box, of, find ways to, to help uh, lessen this issue. I appreciate that as well, Commissioner. Um, we owe a duty and responsibility to our businesses and our business owners and our community. Uh, we have reached out to them uh, regarding this issue. Really, there's a lack of people don't care, honestly. That's my that's my opinion on this. There's just no fear of repercussion, it seems like. Um, I find this another thing very frustrating for me uh, dealing with this. Um, we've had conversations, just so you're aware, with our several of our businesses that we've been frequent uh, flyers at. 
and regarding that and encourage them to get their own security and that um, that deterrent only goes so far. Um, you know, they are quick to report that as they should, um, you know, and, you know, no, notify us that there is an incident at their business and responding to this. Um, we had partnered with our biz other businesses, Target for one and Home Depot for another that come to mind right away uh, and Walmart uh, with uh, off-duty details coming into the holiday season. We'll be reaching out. They'll be reaching out to us regarding that. So we'll be getting uh, probably shortly with details out at our malls and our stores um, to have a physical police presence out there to hope we cut down on that to make sure everybody feels safe while they're out shopping as well. Um, yeah, this is a frustrating problem. And, and uh, this is something that we see continue to see a s slow and steady spike in this uh, throughout the last few months. We've seen this and we've talked about it at public safety in the past as well. And what more we can do with that. Um, I'm open to your suggestion. I, I, again, I'm, I'm taking note of that as well and reaching out to them and seeing what, what more we can do on that. Um, but Coming into the holiday season, I can assure you that we will be seeing an, an, a, a police presence uh, in most of our commercial areas uh, during the holiday season, which I'm hoping that'll help us as well to, to uh, stem some of this. And, and these are state laws uh, that are that uh, just have, have been passed and, and have there uh, are there discussions um, at all or is there a push to amend those laws that you're aware of? I just haven't even looked into it. Not at this point, no, sir. I mean, there's, you know, there, there's that we're, we're following the state statutes for retail theft and, you know, along with the penalties and everything else. I just don't think there's a fear of being caught in this. It, it's, you know, it's, it doesn't have any kind of connotation to, you know, they're not worried about it, it seems to me. And again, right. that comes from a point of frustration uh, on my end a little bit. Um, but this is something I, I, I like your idea on that, getting together with the business owners. Again, I've talked to a uh, several of the commissioners about this in the past, and we have done that. We reached out to Wawa to get their detail there. They've done that. We've reached out to uh, some of the stores at the Cheltenham Square Mall. They've done that as well. Um, you know, the uh, Wal Walgreens is another um, that we're, we're at pretty much every day, it seems like. Um, you know, we talked to them about having security. They have security there. It's just, you know, it's more than one person doing this. I, don't, I think it's a lack of fear um, as well, um, a repercussion maybe, um, you know, but... Uh, We'll continue to do that. We'll continue to look for ways we can help our businesses, uh, you know, and help you know our community feel safe while they're shopping out there. That's paramount to me, um, making the, the community feel safe while they're out shopping and then, you know, being a partner along with our businesses, you know, so they're successful as well. Sure. Thanks, thank Chief. You. Thank you, uh, Commissioner Cherko. Commissioner Norris. Uh, thank you, Commissioner Brockington. Uh, Chief, one one question and one comment. The question on the, uh, on the bus patrol, uh, the fees, $300, are they being paid? Do we have any information on on how many people are just skipping, ignoring the notices, or how many are actually, because $300 seems like a significant fine to me. We're talking about increasing it, but if they're not paying it in the first place. I'm talking about a revocation of a license. Forget about the fine. We'll give, we'll give you the fine the first time, $300 fine first time. Next time we're taking your license from you. But do I mean, you know how we've been collecting it? Have they been? Yeah. The, the numbers, when we talked to bus patrol originally, the numbers were in the high 80s of the, the amount of responses they were getting. Okay. I'd have to give you a hard number on ours as well, but I believe ours is is, is up there as well um, as far as people responding to the citations. Okay. Um, I don't have an exact number for you tonight, sir. I can get you that as well while I'm looking at the, the repeat number. I'll, I'll make sure I get that okay. to the board. And then just one comment on the, um, on the uh, car break-ins. Um, I very much appreciated that in your description of that, um, both tonight as well as in the emails that I've seen, uh, that you've made it clear that this is a uh, multi-township issue, uh, that the arrests that were, the, the break-ins uh, and the subsequent arrests had to do not only with Cheltenham, but I think it was Abington or Upper Dublin or elsewhere. Yes. Uh, that That's important because um, too often um, the message gets out there that Cheltenham has the crime and and it's clear in, in this instance it's it's uh, all over the place and similarly with the retail theft uh i certainly share the concerns of others with the retail theft and jeff you made a lot of good points um i will point out the cvs in abington they have a whole bunch of stuff locked up too um i'm i'm not saying that's that's good i'm saying that uh as as uh, everyone's expressing frustration and clearly the chief also uh, retail theft is a growing uh, problem. Uh, I think nationally. 
I would I would say nationally is correct. I was going to say regionally, but you're correct. It's a national problem. You know, I speak to my counterparts throughout Montgomery County. We're dealing with the same issues. We're dealing with the retail theft issues. We're dealing with theft from auto issues as well. Um, and as I said to the board, we share information on a regular basis with our law enforcement partners. There's an Eastern Montgomery County block that gets together, shares that intelligence information, suspect information, and we utilize that when we deploy our guys out there. So that, you know, that's that's ongoing. Any information we can get with that, we can provide to our officers to be more effective. We'll do that. That's an ongoing process. I just want you guys to know yeah. that. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Norris. Commissioner Harmon and then Commissioner Lewis. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Chief, going back to the bus patrol, uh, I, I know it's a state program. Do we have the ability as a township to pass an ordinance that fines people for passing the buses illegally that we can then utilize the video and, and tack on our own citation uh for uh for passing the bus and and i understand that maybe money is not the uh uh the, the deterrent but depending on the amount maybe it does become a deterrent and then if people don't pay uh then then you know presumably when they pass through our township or drive within the township uh and uh and they're viewed by a police officer they could be pulled over for um, for outstanding fines and, and whatnot. So I don't know if we can do that. And I don't know if you, if, if it's been raised before, but I, I just am curious about whether there, we can there would be some sort of legal tack on our with own. Doing that commissioner, just so you know, there would be some issues with that. We'd have to look at that, but that's kind of a double jeopardy. You're getting, you're getting fined twice for the same violation. We'd have to look and see uh, what, what our options with that. I'd have to confer with uh, our uh, township solicitor on that as well. Uh, and the district attorney's office on that. So we can look at that route as well, if that's something the board's interested in um, with that. Like I said, my 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 spin on this is coming from frustration on this. When I say, you know, the fine, the $300, I think is a lot of money. Um, but if we're not getting their attention with the $300 fine, the second violation should be, you know, a license suspension or some kind of, you know, some kind of heavier point violation assessed to it. And that needs to be done through the legislature. Yeah, so th that we don't have control over. I guess yes, I'm sir. trying to trying to grasp at what maybe we do have control over, and if that's something you could explore, I'd appreciate yep. it. I will do that. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, Mr. Mr. Commissioner Harmon. Commissioner Lewis, you're on mute. Thanks, sir. Mr. Chairman. <laughs> um, so this is a serious problem, and. Um, I think we need to take some drastic measures before we have a serious uh, accident. And I'm going to suggest that we talk to our elected officials and uh, have a press conference. Let's get the news media there. Uh, let's talk about the problem, but also be prepared. Then I would uh, help ask the elected officials to talk about what they will do to uh, legislate this problem uh, with the intent to suspend licenses or whatever else it may take. I agree the $300 fine, if they're even paying it, is not a deterrent. Uh, these are reckless folks, short of folks that actually make a, a mistake. Uh, they're, they're speeding and before you know it, the stop sign comes out and it's too late for them to stop. Um, but I think we need to talk to our elected officials from the Congresswoman down. Let's get a press conference. Uh, let's get some, some news, uh, paper news, as well as, uh, television news about this serious, uh, situation in Sheltonham and probably, uh, wouldn't be surprised if it's not throughout the Commonwealth. I appreciate that commissioner. And as I said, I you know, we can certainly reach out to our uh, news media contacts there, have, have a story done on this immediately, um, you know, and let them know we're having an issue here. And I can follow up on that right away with that. And then looking forward to uh, getting together with our le elected officials on that as well, um, letting them know we have this issue and asking them for their, their guidance and help with, uh, you know, passing legislation that has a little bit more teeth to it. Thank you. With Thank that, you, Commissioner. And and chief, just a quick question before before you do that, if you if you want to get together and consult, I uh, you know as a former news reporter, I'm happy to kind of come together and maybe come up with um, the best approach for reaching the media, both visually yeah. and uh, glad to do that with you, sir. I will pick you up. Yeah. Here. Hi, hey chief, I, I want to jump in here. Um, when we were talking about the retail theft, you said that was every you know sort of everywhere. 
Are you are you hearing the same issue in reference to the bus issue in other townships? Well, some of our surrounding partners do not have bus patrol. Okay. Um, you know, Abington, uh, for one, does not have it. So okay. Upper Moreland would have it. Um, I'd have to reach out to them and see what their numbers are. And I may do that, you know, doing my homework on this. Um, and probably, hopefully we can partner with them as well yeah. to get this message out as well. So uh, yeah. the more because, the barrier towards this uh, as yeah. a United Front would be, was, was the way I would approach it. Um, so I, mean, I would I'm, do that I'm, as well. Yeah. I'm really curious with that, especially with Upper Moreland, because they're a little bit further from Philadelphia. Mm -hmm. Um, and we were saying that that may have been one of our issues. Um, and one other thing I want to bring up, and mainly it's in, in the village, with the smaller streets there, are the buses allowed to do that block-to-block -block maneuver when they sort of take the bus and sort of swing it over and they, they sort of block traffic being able to come either direction? Are you talking about pickups and, and drop-offs? Yeah, when the bus yeah. is picking up and dropping off kids. Yeah. And Most I've of the seen drivers... Some, I've seen some buses do that. They literally yeah. take it. Now that car cannot go by unless it actually goes up on the sidewalk. And they're doing that to basically stop traffic either way. I have no issue with that. As long as their lights are activated, they can stop traffic in both ways and they can do it in a safe manner. Yeah. <laughs> um, we've, we talked to the drivers as well when this program was launched, um, you know, and I tell them when you can take that, take that. That's fine. Take it. Get get out there. Block traffic off. Um, be good witnesses. We you know as we spoke to the drivers as well. Um, mm -hmm. You know that type of thing. So um, I'll follow up on these suggestions. Um, this you know this does number continues to climb. Um, it is a concern um, with this. We're not getting what we're hoping to get out. But I was hoping we would get attention, everyone's attention from this, and we'd start seeing the decline. We're not. We're seeing a steady steady growth with this, and it's not you a good should. thing. Are you sharing this information with our school district also? Are they aware of this? Of this, Our issue? district had very little to do with this other than collecting the check at the end of the month, honestly. They don't advertise hardly. They don't do much. They've got to step up on their end as well. And that's frustration as well on um, that point. But, I mean, they need to do more on that as well. So we can go to that front as well and, and uh, ask for them to step up their end. Yeah, I think that would be important. Any other questions for our chief for his report for tonight? Not seeing or hearing anything, I call for the approval of item 1A, our police chief report for September 2024. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Thank you, Chief. Aye. We're going to move on to item 1B Aye. now Aye. for our fire marshal, um, Mr. Lynch, for September 2024. Mr. Lynch, you have the floor, sir. Uh, good evening. Um, uh, it appears that I've submitted to you the October report. I was a month ahead. Um, so I will get that September information to you tomorrow. Um, uh, okay. I just have uh, one additional thing to add, if I may, please. Um, so uh, the, the, new, the new reporting software, first two, has been purchased. Uh, Mike Rubin and I and Joe Stuckert are working vigorously. Uh, we had another meeting with them today, getting uh, the information that needs to be put in there to get us up and running by January 1. With that said you are going to notice a different type of format for the reporting um, starting uh, January, February for next year. It's going to be a little bit shorter, a little bit more detailed, but um, there's going to be some of the things that is provided now um, may, may not be incorporated in there. So I had to figure, figure that out. If you're still requiring all that information, um, or if we can do these two uh, pages, you know, the main two pages. Okay. Um, Commissioner Rappaport, and then Commissioner Armin. Okay. Then mm -hmm. Thanks very much. Yeah, I have a couple of questions, please, uh, Mr. Fire Marshal. Um, first of all, the the um, I think many of us were relieved to see the burn ban uh, on open burning. I had a question about that. What about people's fireplaces indoors? So good question. Thank you for raising that. I've received several phone calls uh, after the burn ban was put in place. Um, uh, the burn ban is, is specific to fire pits and campfires. Um, uh, I've had several people call and say, can I use my propane grill? Can I use my propane heater? Um, we're start I've gotten a couple calls now that we're getting into some chillier weather however long that's going to last. But um, yeah, today a couple of people called about using their fireplaces. And the answer to that is yes, you can use all of that because that's more controllable than an open flame. 
The fireplace is contained to the inside. The barbecue grill with the propane, if something happens, we can shut the fuel off immediately. So um, all of that is uh, permitted. Thank you. And then <clears throat> the other question really is more to your reports. During the um, budget hearings, we heard some issues with um, problems that the fire companies are actually having with response times, making sure that the trucks get out and are fully manned and, and get to the fire. Um, but I don't think that really is showing in the statistics that we're seeing in terms of response to it. So I'm wondering if you could clarify, really. Um, so there's one thing about dispatching, another statistic for responding. There's another aspect of about arrival. And then of course there's the aspect of getting water on the fire or hoses or whatever the situation calls for. So I don't know. Uh, can you clarify maybe, and, and maybe tonight you can't, but um, I mean, that is an issue. So, so need it clarified. Yep. So uh, I'm going to give it my best shot. Um, so when the call is received or the call, the call is received at the uh, 911 center, it's, a, it's, an, it's an initial time within probably 45 seconds of that call being received, the fire companies are dispatched. Uh, that's when the clock starts ticking. Uh, fire companies have uh, six minutes to get apparatus on the road. At that six minute mark, if there's no response, you get a response check. If there's no response check, it goes to that company, a second dispatch, and they add the next units uh, that are supposed to go on that call. So when I, the information you have, the average response time of these four and five minutes, okay, um, when, you, when you take each dispatch time, some are four minutes, some are seven, some are six, and you add them all up and you divide it by the number of call. That's where I'm getting my average from. But um, we, we're seeing more because of uh, we're seeing more and more lengthier response times, if that makes sense to you, where it's it's not four minutes, it's now six and seven minutes because um, each station has the same people responding to all the calls and they're tired and they're slowing down and, you know, they're doing the best they can at this point, if that makes any sense to you. Yeah, that's very clear. And then, um, so the implication, of course, is that there's a second call that goes out in those cases, and whether it's mutual aid or mutual aid within the uh, township, either one, either outside or inside, we're, we're requiring more and more of those. Uh, to a point, yes, especially during the day. But for, for the most part during the day, the companies are – have the chiefs have gotten together and have corrected their dispatch procedures to the point where they're running two companies on everything from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. when the manpower is shorter and a lot of guys are at work. After 6 o'clock, um, we're not seeing so much of the mutual uh, automatic aid because um, there's a difference between automatic aid and mutual aid. Um, but um, we're not seeing that so much. Uh, after 11 o'clock at night, we're seeing occasionally a response check because, you know, guys are getting out of bed and trying to get to the firehouse and get a truck on the street in six minutes. And, you know, it's the same group at each station. Okay. Well, um, thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Armour and Commissioner Zygmunt. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Fire Marshal Lynch, uh, going back to the burn ban, can you just, um, uh, I appreciate the clarity on the propane and the indoor fireplaces, but uh, for the actual burn ban, can you just remind us what the parameters are, the time frame, how long it's in place, how long it, uh, when, when it will be lifted, if it ever will be lifted uh, <laughs> until the winter? Um, so if you could just clarify that for us, I'd appreciate it. Yes, sir. Absolutely. So we put a burn ban in place for a 30 day period to uh, see if in that 30 days we received enough rain that we could lift it. Um, we did have some rain earlier this week that barely wet the windshields of cars. So right. the burn ban's still in effect. Um, as far as the parameters, it deals with all open fires on the outside, um, your fire pits, 
fire, you know, campfires, things like that, where you're using wood that um, will heat up enough, it'll crack and pop and send embers out. And that's what we're concerned with. Um, fair, fair enough. We, and, and the 30 days started when and it is supposed to expire when? 30 days. We put it in effect uh, before Halloween. So it should be, you know, the 30 day would go to almost the end of this month. Now, again, uh, if, if we don't have enough rain, and let me be clear on enough rain, we, we need a couple inches. Right. Okay? I mean, and everybody sees that we're, we're into drought warnings and things like that. I'm, you follow the news. I just tonight on Channel 10, they're, they're saying some of the pieces are in drought warnings. OK, so uh, when we get to that 30 days or close to it, uh, it's going to be uh, my recommendation if we don't have enough rain that we extend it. OK, that, that's exactly what I was getting at. And, and that will be then uh, reissued and announced the same way you did the first time around. Correct. Yes, correct. We'll put it out right. on all of our social media outlets, everything like that. Thank you very much. That's Thank all you. I have. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Commissioner Armand. Commissioner Zickenfeld. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. So I had a question uh, before Commissioner Rappaport raised hers, and and it goes along these lines, uh, Mr. Fire Marshal Lynch. Um, Glenside Fire Company is right now providing personnel for about 43% of all the, the active calls that happen. In other words, uh, in that October report, you showed 1,079 personnel that were enlisted, and about 43% of those are from Glenside. They're averaging 11 personnel per call versus the three other companies for six. And what I'd like is, is do we have an ability to analyze um, the utilization of those additional firefighters, particular in Glenside, where you have, you know, are they all in the second round of calls as opposed to the primary calls. In other words, are most of the calls coming in that part of the township? So that reflects the fact that they have a more active number of personnel or are they almost always included in a fire call because the other companies are limited to that average of six per call? I'm, I'm trying to get a feel for that because it does relate to Commissioner Rappaport's point about, you know, timeliness and all that. I want to understand that how we set up the dispatch um, and that it's coming from the county to a large degree, that we're utilizing that manpower effectively. And if, in fact, most of those fires, no offense, Commissioner Armin, are in your ward, we want to know that, you know, that there's some of the things that we can do um, to utilize. The assumption is that they're always on call virtually every fire call. So could you help us understand how that personnel allocation both is in existence and then are there ways that we can utilize them in a different fashion for some of the calls that maybe uh, need to be handled in other parts of the township? Uh, absolutely. So uh, at this point in time, Glenside is very fortunate to have a lot of members. Um, uh, for If you don't know, there's uh, four firemen that uh, are in a rental property across the street from the firehouse. So the, it's there and there's a couple guys down the street. So there's your, there's six guys relatively close that they're getting a truck out really quick. Uh, your other personnel coming in are your second truck, your third truck. Um, and depending upon the call is the number of personnel you're going to get out. Um, they had an incident Friday night and they ended up having like 14 people for a, uh, a brush fire. Okay. So Glenside is very fortunate. To be able to utilize those personnel on other calls in the other township, it's it's not kind of not practical because they're all in the west end of the township, and again, it, it wouldn't make sense to pull the people from the west end and put them in the Sumner or the east because then if something happens, you're you're just it's it's almost like stealing from Peter to pay Paul type of thing. I just, you know, because part of this is we try and be equitable in our treatment of each of the fire mm -hmm. companies. We've just, uh, for those who don't know, we've just committed that we're going to give each fire company an additional $50,000 as part of the 2025 budgeting to enable them to do additional personnel, paid personnel, in hours in which they are short personnel, either daytime or evening. And it's their allocation of those dollars that are important. But I'm just looking for you know, something of a more optimal use 
of personnel within each of the fire companies. And, and I know the dispatch comes from the county. So sometimes we're making the second effort um, and it's putting a lot more of our folks on the street. You know, like you said, there were 14 at that fire and maybe that's what it required. Yeah, it did. Okay. Thank you, Commissioner Zygmunt. Any other questions for our fire marshal? Not seeing or hearing any. I'm going to call for the approval of, of item 1B, which is the October 2024 um, report, not September's. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. We're going to move to item 1C, the Emergency Medical Service Chief, Chief Barto. Hello. Good um, evening. Good evening. How are you? Good. How are you? Good. Does anybody have any questions? Any about the questions about the report? There's no questions, oh. Jeff. Jessica, is there anything that you want to share? Um, no, we're uh, keep on keeping doing... on, and it's looking okay. good over there. So you guys are good. All right. Well, that's very good to hear. So I'm going to call for the approval of item one C, the emergency medical service chief's report for September 2024. All those in favor? Aye. 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 With Thank thanks. You. And yes, with thanks. I didn't. There's Ken on this call. I don't see Ken, but mm -hmm. I will. Are there any, well, he's not here to answer any questions, so we're going to move right on to the approval of the Emergency Management Coordinator's Report for October 2024. All those in favor? Aye. 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 We're going to move on now to item two, the receipt of committee uh, minutes. Um, Fire Board met November 7th, 2024. Uh, Fire Marshal Lynch, do you have anything about your report? from that meeting from, that uh, from meeting? the november meeting yeah uh so um the fire company when they receive a new member it goes through the process they've been going we've been using concentra for our fire department physicals uh one mm -hmm. of the problems we've been having there is the restriction on the hours um and uh some of the ways they're handling that if you don't pass and you need to go back to your primary and things like that. So at the request of the fire chiefs, um, we have researched and uh, come up with Liberty Urgent Care up in Horsham. I have reached out to Divid since we are our insurance carrier. We're going to pick them up in January. Um, and uh, I have sent two emails and a voicemail and I have not heard back from them yet. However, uh, urgent care offers hours up till 11 o'clock at night. Um, so, uh, you, you won't, you no longer, if, if that's the route that the chiefs decide to take and it's the best, uh, efficiency and economically feasible for the township, you know, the guy, new members won't have to take a vacation day to get a physical to join the fire company to help give back to their community. Um, the, the way they handle their process and the results is quite a bit different. So, um, that is going to be the highlight pretty much of the November fire board meeting. Um, fantastic. fantastic. Uh, and then the only other thing, again, is the software, the, the new reporting software first due. And we're working on that vigorously with Mike Rubin. Uh, Joe Stuckert's helping out a bit with that too. Great. Are there any questions in reference to the fire board meeting? Uh, Commissioner Jericho and then Commissioner Zidman. Um, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, so I don't want this to be taken the wrong way by anyone on the board, on any of the companies. Obviously, I'm. Uh, we're all indebted to all the hard work that they do. Um, <clears throat> ever since I opened an office in Glenside, I've been paying a, a little bit more attention to the Glenside Fire Company. And I've been noticing uh, over the past six months or so, uh, a lot more uh, perhaps community involvement and community fundraising efforts. And maybe it's just anecdotal um, and maybe I'm missing uh, and not informed on things. But uh, I'm wondering if um, Glenside may be doing something the right way, um, having, uh, I see fundraisers, I have two, there are two fundraisers listed on the report that you provided today. Um, are they doing something that the others aren't? And are there, is there best practices? Um, is there a way that we can encourage um, similar type of, of community outreach, of fundraising? I know they're all individual companies, but do they need the help? 
to be able to better fundraise within the community <clears throat> in order to get uh, you know the, the community members to be more involved. I'm just not seeing it in the reports and I'm wondering <laughs> what we need to do uh, to make sure that any efforts um, that are, I mean, we're giving $200,000 as a township to these, to this, the, the fire companies and rightfully so, but I want to make sure that there are uh, serious efforts also being made to fundraise. And I'm just not seeing them as much as I'm seeing the Glenside and maybe I'm just not looking in the right place. No, no. Um, it's a, a good point and good question. So um, Glenside has a little bit of an advantage over the other companies, especially with the much larger business district right there uh, in close proximity to the firehouse. Um, they have events set that they've done for years um, and it's worked well for them. Uh, they, uh, they're out there with the food truck event, the uh, Santa, they bring Santa Claus to town for the, you know, for the uh, Christmas and holiday stuff uh, on Easter road on Wesley Avenue and all of that. Um, they have the car show on Eastern road sometimes that they're involved in. Um, now, uh, but with as all the, far as as far as getting help with all, with, the, all the, with all the with all the respect on that though, I mean the five k that they hosted had nothing to do with the business district, right? I mean they're also having a trivia night that has nothing to do with whether they have a business district. Um, you know, I'll let you continue, but I, I'm just you know. I, yeah, no, no. Um, so. Uh, they are doing, like you said, the 5K has nothing to do with the uh, business district and supporting the business district. They can help from that. Uh, you, As you mentioned, they're having a trivia night come up in January, I believe, or February. January. You know, and these, yeah. Uh, so it's all, you know, little things that they're doing to continue to uh, raise money and things like that. Um, Cheltenham just had in October a bag bingo night. Um, they do the golf outing every year, uh, which is a fairly good success, um, okay. upwards of almost $20,000 that they're doing from that. Um, now, okay. you had mentioned about, yeah, the, the fire companies are always willing to take help from the community and from everybody, you know, especially with fundraising. So um, I encourage if, if there's ideas or ideas that you think will work please let's um, let's set up a meeting and uh, let's try and make it happen. So if I'm understanding what you're saying is if we can get community members uh, who may not be members of the fire company, but community members to step in and say, Hey, I'm happy to organize. I'm happy to pull together resources to plan something. Um, then that would be, that's what they need at this point. I guess they need community members to together and pitch in and try to help where where possible to raise money for for the fire company is that what i'm understanding yes with and with all due respect it would be a a nudge in the right direction if i if you would you know if that okay because mm -hmm. I, I i think that maybe this is something that we need to um you know put, put some you know effort behind um because i, I do think that there's uh, we're, we're in a difficult situation and I want to make sure that, you know, with the money that the township is, is giving that it's obviously being used properly, but also that all resources are being used to try to raise funds as well. So, um, but thank you for that. Thanks for the explanation. And maybe there's, maybe there's uh, areas um, that I myself can help and, and others in my community can help um, to raise money. So I really appreciate it. I'm always available for your ideas, Commissioner. Thank you. I really appreciate it. Commissioner Zygmunt. Thanks. So to, to the point by uh, Commissioner Cherico, each of the fire companies does have booster groups. And obviously Glenside, due to the size of their membership and some of their history, is, is more substantial. I know each of the fire companies does stuff. And I would say that here's one of those cases where you have to separate the money that's being allocated to the fire companies from the municipality versus their fundraising efforts and their charitable efforts, both for the fire company and for other third party charities or organizations that they may be doing um, some community good for. So just a point that, you know, each of the fire companies, the first and foremost, that, you know, the, the personnel understand the role that they play in the township. Um, but I wanted to just make a point in, in fire board, each of the companies expressed an appreciation to the board of commissioners regarding the additional allocations 
and the ability to be able to use that money to help to supplement um, where they have covered shortfalls. So just an important thing. There's an acknowledgement um, by by those fire companies of, of everything that you know we've done over the last uh, five six years to improve the working relationship and to support them both financially as well as doing things to help to improve um, what we do for the volunteer group. So just a note, and they are very appreciative, uh, and you know they all express thanks to the board. Thank you, Commissioner Zygmuntel. Um, Fire Marshal Lynch, any any other items in reference to the board meeting? No, sir. No, all right. So I call for the approval of the fire board um, minutes for November 7th, 2024. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Traffic Common did not meet in um, October. Is there any old business for tonight for public safety? I'm not seeing any. We're going to move to new business. Item 4A, recommend the Board of Commissioners approve the suspension of parking fees in the commercial district for the holiday season between Thursday, November 28th, 2024 through Wednesday, January 1st, 2025 to help promote shopping at the small businesses in the township. Any questions in reference to this item? If not, I call for the approval of item 4A. Aye. 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 Yes. Thank you. We're going to move on now to item five, which is citizen forum. Any citizen forum for tonight for public safety? Let's see. Don't see any. So I'm going to call for the adjournment of tonight's public safety meeting. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Oh, wait. I think there oh. was one. Um, all right. I don't mind going back. This is one. We'll go back. Lance? No. Nope. You can make it quick because we had already adjourned the meeting oh sorry oh uh, this is lance's wife um yes. we um I, we uh, first of all i this is the first time i attend uh this virtual commissioner meeting and i really appreciate how much effort the police chief and all the commissioners uh, you know put the efforts they put into uh safeguard the community and how much um work you've done for our community um, so uh, we've observed that uh, the traffic situation on Barker Road, which houses, you know, the Barker Road houses the Wincote Elementary, uh, as well as um, a nursing home. Uh, the the traffic in the last uh, six months just increased tremendously. It's not even safe to get out of one's driveway anymore. And uh, the Greenwood Avenue, we used to be able to walk in, in the evenings or night and without seeing too much of a traffic, now it just becomes a super highway. Uh, so it's very, very concerning, uh, especially with the kids uh, going to the school and the parents guiding the, the kids under the uh, the old age home on the block. Um, we're hoping that uh, the commissioners um, would be able to um, sympathize with the new traffic problem and uh, um, perhaps um, can come up with some uh, good ideas and solution. All right, I think Chief is on here. I'm sure he's taking notes of that. Um, and if you wanted to reach out and you could send me an email and be a little bit more detailed as at the time of the day, what you're seeing, and then you know, I, you know, I'll get back to you or your commissioner will get back to you. But the Chief, I see him taking some notes so I'm pretty just sure so you know, ma'am, we, we've had a concerted effort, a concerted effort on Rice's Mill and Glenside Avenue over the last several months. But in the last week, we were out there again today. Yesterday, we we're out there as well, um, looking for traffic issues. Some of this is direct re the increase in traffic flow, especially on Barker Road. There's a direct correlation with the construction on Church Road. Unfortunately, traffic's trying to find its way through there, and they do come through the side street there. Um, so that is some of the issue. But we are addressing that. We have officers out monitoring that. We'll continue to do that as well. Oh, we appreciate it. And, and uh, can I just add said one thing really quickly? Um, it it's uh, after working hours when the roadblock has should have been already um, uh, lifted. So these people, I think, just have find a shortcut, and it's by, uh, because they're definitely after working hours. It's no longer related with the blockage of uh, the, the construction site. And we were wondering 
um, probably the most effective way would be somehow um, be able to issue tickets for people who um, speed on all three st streets. And, and uh, that's exactly what we were doing out there this, this past week, man. But I'll tell you what, I will pass this information on to our patrol squad so they're aware of these, these complaints and we can address it in the evening hour as well. Okay. Thank you very much. And uh, is there any um, move to maybe uh, instruct a speed bump? On the on all three roads, Ms. Wiseman, I, I'll ask you if you can reach directly out to me. My email address is on the township website, and I can kind of guide you as to you know the traffic calming, what you would need to do to have that done. All right, thank okay. you very much. Thank you, thank you very much. Um, and Commissioner Rappaport, I believe is all yours now for public affairs. 